All right, all right, all right. It's Friday night. I'm just putting it out there right now. I'm spreading the rumor. I'm spreading the rumor. It is Friday night, and we're about to have a good evening, man. I'm telling you, a good one. It's not going to be a long one. Tonight is not going to be a long one because, hey, I'm going to be hanging out tonight. I'm going to get some salsa dancing in, chilling, relaxing, just enjoying some of you fellas that's in town. So shout out to all you guys in the live stream. We got 13 people in the building right now. Click that like button. At least 13 individuals. I like you. Make sure you like me too. Our topic tonight, we're keeping it simple, fellas. I've, I've been watching YouTube videos and TikTok videos for the last year plus, and everybody thinks they know what a passport bro is. I'm hearing older dudes saying, I, I, I ain't no passport bro. I was, I, was, I was using a passport before there was passport bros. Unless you were around for World War I or World War II, all you old heads, you are not older than the passport bros. We're going to talk about men of the passport bro movement, the myths of the passport bro movement, and the mindset of the passport bro movement. One of the myths we just talked about, men that actually think that they're older than the passport bro movement. Just because we finally put a title on it doesn't mean that black men haven't been already doing it. We've been out there for the since World War I, World War II. We're going to look back at some articles where they talk about we were treated like royalty in Europe. We're going to look at articles of when they ask brothers, why did you why did you stay in Russia after the war? Why did you go to Russia? One headline in Russia and politician in Russia, they asked the, they asked the brother, why didn't more brothers and sisters come to Russia? We talking about that Russia. We talking about the Russia that's at war right now. After the war, treated brothers and sisters better than they got treated back home in the states. I said it. We're talking about brothers that fell in love with women in Japan and got hated on by women back in the States. Boy, them brothers are bringing their Japanese wives and girlfriends back to the States. Bruh. Them dudes wouldn't like having a baby and just leaving the baby there. No, them dudes are falling in love with some of them Japanese chicks. Some of them Vietnamese chicks. Brought them back to the States. Let the hate begin. Passport bro is older than anybody walking on this planet today. Get that out your mind that you're thinking that we are the new way or, or with the, the original passport bro. We are not. When black men decide to use a passport, whether it be by, by way of military or being by way of business or just relocating to go see family and they decide to stay there, it's always been brothers that have been migrating out of the United States for a better life and more opportunities. Don't let nobody fool you and lie to you that the Passport Bro movement is new. The newness of it is the title and we've kind of like streamlined the mindset but as far, but as, far as the movement itself, the opportunity of black men taking advantage of global opportunities. Oh, yeah, bro. You can blame that on World War II. You can blame that on World War I. You can blame that on Korean War. You can blame that on Vietnam. Shout out to all you military dudes who paved the way. Who paved the way. For dudes such as myself to realize that we can have a better life as long as we take advantage of it by way of our passports. We can have a better wife. I was just talking to a sister today, sister from the States, married an Afro-Colombian brother. She's original, originally a Muslim, cool sister. I'm cool with That's my girl. She's married to an Afro-Colombian brother, very well off because from a well off family here. And they live in the States. They're about to have their first son and everything. Congratulations to them. She's from Africa. Muslim. She said this. She said, well, my young cousin, 
She said, one day he came to me, he was 34 years old, and he said, okay, now it's time for me to get serious. I'm about to go home and get a wife. And she said, I looked at my cousin, I said, what, why are you going back home to Africa to get a wife? You, none of these American women? You, you telling me you've been smashing all these American women since your teenage years, all the way through your 20s, mid through your, through your 30s, you're 34 years old, you're ready to settle down, you're ready to get a wife, you're ready to build a family, a legacy. And you telling me that you ain't choosing none of these women that loved you and cared for you and took care of you and gave you the good sex and took you out partying and showed you their family, they pastor. They introduced you to loved ones and their mamas. You telling me none of these American women? He said, he looked his cousin right, my friend. She said, my cousin looked me right in the face and said, American women aren't wives. I'm going home to get a wife. I'll say that again. There are a lot of people that are originally from other countries got enough sense to use a passport to go get a woman. Notice they don't get criticized at all. You notice how a dude from India, no long, no matter how long he been in India, away from India, he go get him a woman directly from India. I got friends from Ukraine. I remember I told you I was smashing this Ukrainian chick. Fine, her brothers, young dudes, her brothers sent for their wives who were doctors in Ukraine. This back in the day. This is back in the day. All these women in America, these dudes literally were saving their money, busting their ass. They were, they were second generation Ukrainian. They were busting their ass to save their money, to send for their wives, to come to uh, the United States to get married. Why? American women ain't wives. My mama wasn't raised to be a wife. My sister was not raised to be a wife. I didn't see my mom and that teacher had no wifely skills except for maybe cooking. I didn't see my grandmama raise all six of them daughters she had. I ain't seen none of my aunties being raised with wifely qualities. Not saying that they aren't good women, not saying that they aren't good people, but I'm the first one to admit since some of y'all want to water it down and pretend like all the women in your family was raised to be wives. Well, how come it ain't not one of my aunties married? And if they do get married, it's they older. And they usually marry an older dude. You can have five aunties, maybe one or two of them married. Stop me when I'm lying in the comment section. Does that make them bad women? Does that make American women bad women? No, but we do not. If you compare the women globally, the other 96% of women in the world to the 4% of the world of America, because America think it's a world within itself. I promise you this. The women in America, when it comes to being a wife, cannot compare to the steps that are made for women in other countries to be a wife. Even here in Colombia, it don't matter how many degrees you got, education, no matter how many cars she got, no matter how many, how I miss Diva, how many fancy persons she got. One thing about Colombian women, they know, I don't care how many degrees I got, I still need a family. I need to be somebody's wife. I'm not, I, I haven't completed the journey if I'm not married to somebody. That's how Colombia is. And much of South America is like that. And many countries are, are like that. So when I say one of the myths of the Passport Bro movement is <laughs> that they actually think that we're only trans, that we're only going to other locations for women, that's a myth. The other myth is they think that the, I'm talking about for all you old heads. I was around before Passport Bro. No, you wasn't. I've been traveling since 93. So what? 2007, that was my, I don't give a damn. None of us, none of us are older than the Passport Bro movement. Not, not tailor-made dreams, not me. 
not Ace Live, not Aaron from, from Black Men's Travel, not lead attorney. All you dudes that be crying that y'all older than the Passport Bro Movement, y'all are not older than the Passport Bro Movement. Unless you was around around World War I and World War II when brothers first started doing this shit. Don't you never let nobody holler that they, I'm not a past because I was before. You was not before the Passport Bro Movement. You might have been before somebody put a title on it. You might have before... You might have been around before uh, dudes start really using their passports in the black community, but you damn sure wasn't around before brothers took the mindset, and I'll say it again, the mindset of opportunity in other countries. The best thing that ever happened to the United States, y'all ready? I'm gonna bust your head. The best thing that ever happened to the United States is that the war was on American soil. Because we all know if the war would have been on British soil and they had brothers during the war and brothers would have got over to Britain, it wouldn't have been that many slaves left. Because brothers would say, I'm staying over here. I'm done. I help you fight the war, America. But once it's over, I'm staying over here. I, I hang out in Europe. Because that's what a lot of brothers did. That's how brothers ended up in Russia. That's how brothers end up in Japan. That's how brothers ended up staying in Vietnam. That's why brothers ended up staying in other parts of Europe, in Italy, and all the other places that were being invaded during the time of World War II. In Poland. In Germany. That's all right. I, 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 heard, about what, what, I heard about what happened in World War I when brothers came back. I ain't going back. You got brothers that, that they didn't come back until they had a whole family. So when I sit back and I say that there are myths about the Passport Bro Movement, we're going to talk about that. Like I said, I'm not going to keep you guys long. But we're going to talk about the manhood or the men of today's Passport Bro Movement. We're going to talk about the myths and we're going to talk about what mindset it takes because some of these dudes are passport bros and just don't want to, as if, oh, I'm not, that's not me. That I don't do that. Negro, please. Name something that, th that these dudes, these other brothers are doing that passport bros ain't done or ain't doing. Y'all out here in love with real women, so are we. Y'all out there doing pay for play, so are some of us. Y'all out here building businesses, so do we. Y'all out here learning new language, so do we. How the hell you gonna sit back and do passport bro shit, but then when somebody say, are you a pal? No, that's not me. I, I'm not, I'm not a, damn it. If it walks like a motherfucking duck, talks like a duck, squawks like a duck, what the fuck is it then? You can't sit back and say, I'm not a car. I just got four tires and a motor and a V is V8. I, I just so happen to have a transmission. Don't look behind me. That's just a muffler in a trunk. So what? I got two seats. I could have four seats. That doesn't make me a car. Well, damn it, then what does it make you? All the dudes that say that they ain't passport bros, damn it, tell me what the fuck that make you then. If you moving like a passport bro, you eating and you fucking bitches like passport bros, then what the hell did that make you? Mr. I'm not a passport bro. All y'all, I'm tired of hearing that shit. You do all the shit that passport bros do, but then when some embarrassing shit happens, all of a sudden, I'm not a passport bro. I See, I started traveling in 1975. You still ain't old in the passport bro movement. Like I said, unless your happy ass was around during World War I and World War II, and you were doing passport bro shit, you ain't older than the passport bro movement. All you old heads, get that shit out your mind. You are not older than a passport bro movement. I didn't want to curse tonight, but God damn it. I don't even think I made it seven minutes. <laughs> you two be like, hey, if you curse in seven minutes, man, you can't make no money off that video. But I guess I didn't make it. Let me give a few minutes to get the shout outs to the brothers. First of all, we're going to start with the Super Chat brothers. 
My man Kenny in the building, Kenny Fever in the building. Shout out to you, Kenny Ken in the building, representing brother. Thank you very much, Ken, my homeboy, right down here in Cali, Colombia, relocator. Another brother today got his uh Andre helped him with his uh his uh digital nomad visa, got his digital nomad visa approved today. Shout out to that brother, shout out to Andrea. If you guys are looking for help with your with your visa application, just hit us up with the email. Andrea help you out with your digital nomad. Shout out to my man Alexis in the build. That's my homeboy. Just finished talking to him last night. We just chopping it up yesterday. Good man. Good man. Also, black newbie is in the building. It's a duck. It's a damn duck. I'm not a passport, bro. How you know? Anybody that tells me. I'm not a basketball player in the NBA. You know why? Because I know what the fuck a basketball player in the NBA is. I'm not a player in the, in the NHL. Why? Because I know and recognize what a player in the NHL is. It's amazing how people say they ain't something, do it, but don't know what the fuck a passport bro is. You ask them like, oh, you know? Oh, by the way, what's a passport bro? Uh, I don't know. How the fuck you don't know if, how do you don't know if you, if you that? If you don't know, you deny some shit that you don't even know what you deny. I could be walking around saying, I'm about five seven, about, about five seven. Y'all looking at me like Dre, you you over six feet, dog. You about six three, six four. What the no nah, man, I'm five seven. My, my mama told me I was five seven when I was a shorty, so I'm five seven. Dre, that's when you was a shorty, Dre. You about six something, dog. No, nah, man. See, Dre, you don't know measurements. In other words, you are something, but you don't know what you're denying. Once somebody explains to you what you're denying, maybe you can understand it a lot more, Dre. Dre, you are over six feet, brother. I don't care how much you want to yell about it. You're over six feet. Same thing with you dudes that, that claim that you ain't passport bros. I'm I'm beyond the passport bro movement. My, my zen is greater. I don't give a damn. You do all the passport bro shit. But 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 my ass. You do all passport bro shit. Now nah, every dude with a passport is not a passport bro. Let's get that one out the way. Shout out to my man once again, Black Noob and them Canadian boys at it again. Every brother that's got a passport, bro. I mean got a passport is not a bro of ours. There are some pookies and ray rays that's out there fucking up the game. And that's why I'm having this public service announcement tonight. There are some dudes out there that's trying to claim passport, bro. Have been in, have have traveled maybe four trips to DR. If DR is the only place that you ever been, do not claim your passport, bro. You a passport hoe. Yeah, you are. If the Bible says you are a whoremonger, your passport hoe. If DR, if, especially if Sasua is the only, you ain't never been to Santo Domingo, Santiago. Playa, I mean Porta Playa, yeah Porta Pata, Pla Porta Playa. Oh, I pronounced it right. Punta Con, you ain't been to nowhere else. You just hop your happy ass on the plane and land in the sewer and think you in a land of milky motherfucking honey, and you want to run around and say you a passport bro, knowing you go to the sewer maybe three times a year. If you a passport bro, you got you got more than one color stamp in your shit. You'd have been to more, more than one country. I got about a good eight or nine different colors on my shit. Easy. Easy. And when I get back from you, that motherfucker gonna be all tatted up like a goddamn Latin chick from the hood. It's gonna be so tatted up. And y'all wanna sit up there and holler passport? No, you just a dude that got a few dollars, got a passport, and you whore in a motherfucker, so you take your happy ass to Sasua, fuck your ass off, have a good time, we ain't mad at you, but don't be trying to use our moniker under the name of your fuckery. Just say you passport fuckery. Don't say you a passport bro, just say I'm on fuckery. And we respect dudes that's on fuckery, because at least they being honest. But dudes that want to sit back and claim, I'm passport, bro. No, Negro, you not. If only place you ever been is this ever. DR is that little raggedy ass island is the only place you have ever been with a passport. Are you fucking kidding me? I couldn't even holler passport, bro, if the only place I've been is to Colombia. If I'm... If I've been using a passport all this time and the only place I've ever gone to is Colombia, I need my ass whooped. 
I was getting my passport stamped long before Colombia, bro. Long before Colombia. Some of you dudes that never been to all the other Caribbean islands. You ain't been to St. Martin, St. Thomas, St. Lucia. You ain't been to Puerto Rico yet. You ain't been to Dominica. You've been to Dominican Republic, but you ain't been to the island of Dominica. Yeah, that's the other island. If you're gonna be a passport, bro, you gotta got smart. Get some more colors on your ta- more more color tattoos on your damn uh, passport than just them regular ass Sasua. That shit is play. If you still take your ass to Sasua, ain't nobody got no respect for what you doing, nigga. I go to Sasua, nigga. Sasua like early to late two thousands. Sasua is is pre COVID. Okay, if you your bragging rights for Sasua, them days done. All YouTubers that be YouTubers Sasua. Even Taylor made dreams and Chopper Pie left that motherfucker. Ain't nobody hyped you up Sasua no damn more. This dude that still go, but ain't nobody hyping up DR like that no more. Pre-pandemic? Oh, you can talk sh- all the shit you want. Sasua was it. Now? Please, nobody talk about no motherfucker Sasua no more. Y'all can have that raggedy motherfuckers. Motherfuckers to discover that motherfucker. And this is the crazy part about Sasua. At least in Colombia, you got scope of me. You got female put something in your drink. Damn. You got fucked. I understand it. Man, them damn females in Sasua, they get y'all while you still awake. As soon as you walk in the hotel room with the chick or your Airbnb, she starts screaming at the top of her motherfucking lungs that you owe her money, poppy, or you got to give her more money, poppy. All of a sudden, the police survive. She ain't pulled down no panties, no nothing. She still got her bra strap on and everything. And you Negroes in front of the police got to come out that money in the sewer because a goddamn Dominican cussed you out at the top of her lungs. She ain't got to drug you, niggas. I'd rather be drugged than knocked out. At least the chick got me. Oh, she got me. Oh, damn. Fuck. She got me. Y'all women will sit up there in Sasua with all she got to do is yell at the top of her lung, some shit in Spanish, and all of a sudden a bunch of other Spanish people come and your ass coming out your pocket. God damn. You still going to that raggedy motherfucker. You ain't impressing none of us with Sasua. Let that shit go. Y'all niggas that go to Sasua, y'all need to say that shit quietly. From now on. Where you going? Uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm going. Sasua. Where you going? Oh, all right, brother. Have a good have a good time with that one. Am I hating on brothers and Sasua? Oh uh, hell no. I don't care what you where you go and what you do with your money. But all them bragging rights that y'all think y'all be going in barbershop, showing off y'all cell phone with the Sasua photos. Nobody give a fuck about what y'all got in Sasua. We be laughing at y'all ass now. Sasua is the motherfucking laughing stock of the passport movement. Oh, you didn't know? Shit. That's why we be laughing at you motherfuckers. The only people that ain't laughing at dudes in Sasua is dudes that still going to Sasua. I said it. The only motherfuckers that don't laugh about going to Sasua is you motherfuckers that still going to Sasua. Now, if y'all don't take that money and zoom y'all ass to Thailand some goddamn way, or Cambodia, Philippines, all up in Germany, you're all that goddamn European pussy waiting to get fucked and sucked, and y'all sit up there still going to Sasua, ragged ass, beach, motherfucking beach sand, beat down ass Sasua? At least if I was to go to DR, I'd be in Santa Domingo somewhere. Give me some business. So at least some, some Dominican chick that got some business by herself halfway. But ragged ass, island ass, tin roof ass, and sewer bitches. Y'all niggas crazy. But hey, to each his own. Let's get these shout outs in. My man. Oh, that's I thought that was Steve Steve first. <laughs> uh, but but shout out to uh uh, we are knights in the building. He said, got my appointment on August 12th, uh, post office. There we go, brother. That's what I'm talking about. Get that damn passport. We got 78 people in the building. Click that like button, guys. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. MD is in the building. He said, you know, I tuned in, Unc. Yes, yes, sir. Tonight's topic is about understanding the passport bro movement. We're going to talk about the men. We're going to talk about the myths. And we're going to talk about the mindset. So I won't be too, too long. I promise you guys that because I'm going to be hanging out. Once again, my man's the finals in the building representing Ola Mi Gente. He says Friday. So you know what time it is, right? Dre got a great show for, for, uh, for y'all tonight. 
get that drink in hand tonight is friday night and it is drink in hand he's right make sure that you hit that like button and keep it clean in the chat that's one thing i appreciate about you guys you always keep it clean in the chat it'd be funny y'all bring the jokes but y'all always keep it clean uh yes yeah, the final make sure you drop the link for your channel as well uh charles says it's a fire ass intro <laughs> let's get it people <laughs> by drinking hand yeah man only reason i'm not drinking right now because i'm going to be driving tonight so i'm going to be you know moderation you say being back in uh sasua jiu-jitsu oh that's what's up brother i mean in, in, in brazil i said sasua <laughs> on my mind but brazilian jiu-jitsu has been very painful reminder uh stay hydrated absolutely correct guy it's been hot there hot out there in this world Boy, that global warming is no joke. Boy, the, the, the scientists warned us that global warming is no joke. Woo. Goodness gracious. Black Scorpion is in the building. Criminal minded. You've been blinded. Shout out to KRS One. Okay, uh, that's right. <laughs> Looking for a style like mine, you can't find it. <laughs> that was my song, boy. The philosophy. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was my one of my favorites. Everyone was sing a song. Everyone, what was the line? Uh, everyone tried to write a song. No one gets along, but everyone be singing for the king. Am I wrong? Yo, what's up? I forgot the lyrics to to, uh, to KRS One's philosophy. That was that was my song. KRS got the rock BDP again. Amazing intro. Raymond in the building. Shout out to you, brother. Yeah, man, I'm trying to get these. Uh, the, hey, them old heads always trying to deny. I ain't no passport, bro. That's not me. I'm, I was in the military in 72. I don't give a fuck what you was. You were you in the military in the first world war? No. What, what about the second one? No. Korean War. No. Vietnam. No. Well, sit your ass down. You a damn passport, bro. All the denial and shit. Sitting up there, that's like being talking about you. A, I ain't no alcoholic. You the drunkest motherfucker at the party for the last six years, but I ain't an alcoholic. Nigga, you the drunkest one at the party. Shout out to Charles again. Them Italians, Japanese, Vietnam, German women. Stupid. They, they be fine, dog. I ain't even lie. I, 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 I thank the Lord that I've had my share. I was like Lisa Stanfield, being around the world, <laughs> trying to find my baby. I don't know when, I don't know why. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm, I, I at least got my feel of this planet before getting married. I think that's what makes marriage a lot easier for me because I've been there with just about everybody. I could go to the UN and represent. Shout out to Kitty Peoples in the building. He said, what to do, Slim? Uh, uh, get my message. I Actually, I did. I did, Kenny. I just didn't have, have enough time to uh, respond. Like, I'm, like I, I had to go take care of something. Then by the time I got back, I checked out your message. The, uh, record clubs in the building. Salute to you, brother. Orange DNA in the building, man. I like them shoes, brother. Representing. Man, those are clean. Shout out again, shout out again to Black Scorpion. Jay Fleming's in the building. Make sure you guys subscribe to this man's channel. Cause he's bringing the science of how it's supposed to be done. Shout out to my man Cortez in the building as well as my man Prime VA. Them VA boys at it again. He said, "Omen in America <laughs> want to be paid. Uh, want to be paid in a relationship. They pocket watch. Yeah, they they do. They pocket watch more than foreign women do." When you go out with foreign women, man, I mean a real foreign woman, that's that's quality. Cause you gonna have some. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something for y'all to y'all guys straight up. The first foreign woman you meet, she might not be the one. Sometimes we come down to these countries and we think like the first, or second, or third one, I'm good. No, sometimes it might take to the fifth or sixth one, just like in the states. But don't think that because the first or second one was, was, wasn't was no good that all oh, the whole country bad. No, man. That's how life works. You're not going to, you're not going to, you know, be able to sh hit three pointers the first time you start sh throwing threes. Stick to the script is in the building. What up, OG? He's out here in Cali, Colombia. Uh, 
and don't know what to get into, do me a favor. Shoot me an email, man. Shoot me an email. See if I can catch up with you this weekend. What you need to be go to, going to is Club Living or La Topa. Club Living or Club La Topa. That's where you need to be going to. You thank me a hundred times over. They got this one club down here, man. I keep forgetting the name. I've been to it a few times with some of you guys. This club ranks number 76. I think it's 70, 76 or 79. Top club in the world. I'm telling y'all, Cali got some clubs. Y'all think Medellin got some shit. But all you Medellin boys, y'all stay right out there where Sasua is. Keep your happy asses on out there. Shout out again to my man Alexis in the building. In the building. Cortez says, uh, uh, prime according to, oh, I'm, I'm dipping the conversation. It's according to, I'm just I'm dipping. According to them, Passport Bros got to feed the whole, fa- that's some, that is bullshit, dude. That's another, you know, I'm married down here. And some of you guys are married or in relationships with people from my, are we feeding the whole? Family? I, I do not feed Andrea's family. These people got jobs, they work, careers, education, degrees. Everybody in her family own property. I don't know where they get these damn ideas from that we all we all in relationship with villagers. Like everybody that we fall in love with gotta have family in a village. Like they can't have no family with education in it. They can't have no ex-military family members, none of that. All their family members just struggling, waiting for one American to come along and save the whole tribe. They act like we down here feeding tribes, man. That's another myth. <laughs> man, them American women just mad because y'all taking the money away from their pockets. Y'all down here in Colombia buying chicks ice cream cones and getting coochie. Instead of buying chicks four hundred dollars meals in the states and maybe getting some coochie, that's what they mad about. They mad because all of the future stepdaddies, I said it, all the future stepdaddies getting passports. All you do that's supposed to keep your happy ass in the states and be a stepdaddy and keep your mouth shut and take care of another man's kids. My bad, other men's kids, because most of these women that got more than one kid got more than one baby daddy. Take care of these men's kids. And shut your mouth. And now you done got a dang passport and you think the women aren't pissed that the future stepdaddies are leaving? You got Ebony K, the news reporter. She pissed because it ain't enough black sperm in the, in the sperm banks. If you black men don't realize that right now in the United States, your sperm is golden. Golden. You sitting up there just busting the chicks just to be, man, You if you don't hold that sperm and be like, listen, my sperm is gold. You got you got to come better than that. You, I'm giving you some coochie. Oh, what else you bringing? If I was in the States, man, I'd be so damn arrogant with my sperm. Be like, uh-uh, no, no, hell no. No, you can't swallow it. You might spit it in a jar. No, hell no. No, it's going it's going straight into this condom. No. I'm like mother. I'm like Drake. I'm putting hot sauce in this shit. Mm-mm. No. Black black sperm. Y'all better start reading some news reports. Black sperm in the United States and sperm banks are at a all-time low. Brothers ain't donating shit. Hell no, you can't get my sperm and then try to get child support from me in the in the future. That's how you. That's how you see a lot of uh, beautiful mixed kids and uh, black Europeans in Asia. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of Blasians. My man Iman in the building or Iman Iman. I gotta keep. I keep messing my man Iman name up. Let me scroll down. Scroll down. Monk Mo One is in the building representing. You know, I like that picture, brother. Nothing but love, nothing but love. Let me catch up with you guys. I'm not even halfway through. Shout out to, to, to Mo. <laughs> I'm just saying, Mo, am I? Tell me, am I lying? Just tell me, my man, Susu is trash. 
and all you Sasua fans, I tell us, oh, one thing I can tell you this, and I say this often, anybody that's met me in person, they know that's how Andre is in real life. They can tell, this, there is no off camera, he's kind of like quiet and aloof. He's like reserved. Fuck no, I ain't reserved in, in real life. I'm still coming to the club, kicking in the doors, acting like I, I'm the owner of this motherfucker. Hey, come on, girl, let's go on this dance floor. So anything I say on off camera, on camera, I will say that shit off camera in a New York minute. Man, y'all niggas still go to Sasua. Man, y'all can't sit with me. What what what's up, Drake? Like, you Sasua niggas, man. That that shit contagious. Get the hell away from me. You need to get a cootie shot. Sasua. And this dude is going to Sasua for the first time this year, bragging their ass off like they discovered, like they Christopher Columbus. They about to take a flag and every damn thing and plant a flag like they didn't discover motherfucking North Pole and shit. Oh man, Sasua. Like, that, that. Sasua, like yesterday, that's like an old ass comic book that ain't nobody reading no more. Mm -mm, hell no. Sasua is like trying to read the Jet magazine. Ain't nobody read it in years, have you? Bibba used to be on the on the coffee table. Remember that? That's Sasua. Sasua is an old ass jet magazine that used to be on the coffee table. Sasua is like your mama's collection of jet magazines that used to be piled up like that. That's that's Sasua. Old and don't nobody read it no more. Y'all talking about Sasua. They need to Sasua nigga for actually getting on that motherfucking plane. <laughs> right ass planes going to Sasua. No, I'm not hating on the Sasua brothers, man. I'm just saying, don't be bragging about shit like it's still a shit. That's like Medellin brothers. Y'all still bragging about Medellin like a Medellin is, is the, oh my, is, oh Medellin. Dude, that shit was cool like maybe five years ago. Medellin is another city that was pre-pandemic. You could talk your Medellin shit before a pandemic. You could talk big game about uh, before the pandemic. Like, yeah, Medellin, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, we are Medellin, but now, you got rappers making Medellin videos. You got dudes getting drugged every other weekend. You got dudes getting kidnapped now and ran up on. You got Asian dudes with YouTube channels and all that. And Medellin, what the, what the fuck did this happen? Man, Medellin is so played out. All you Medellin dudes, man, y'all joke. I'm not y'all, but that experience, that shit is yesterday. If y'all don't take your ass to other parts of Colombia, that's why Cartagena's so popular. Cause ain't nobody giving a fuck about Medellin no more. They like, wait a minute. You telling me I can have all the fun of Medellin? Check. I got a beach? Check. I got the clock tower with better women. Cause I get to have Venezuelan, Brazilian, as well as Colombian women under the clock tower. Check, check. They got fly ass nightclubs? Check. And they got black history. Check. You ain't got none of that shit in Medellin. So I can respect Cartagena way. I can respect the dude saying, man, we're going to Cartagena for like our fifth trip. Hell, I can respect that shit. We going to we going to uh to the city of Palenque to go see the first black town outside of Cartagena. I can respect that black history. We going uh, uh we going on jet skis. We're going to go rent a boat in uh in, in, in Cartagena. I got you. You can't do none of that shit in Medellin. Ain't no black history in Medellin. Ain't no beaches and bad motherfucking Venezuelans all running through Medellin like that. Not like it is in Cartagena. If I was coming to Colombia the first time, I promise you, the last motherfucking place I'll be telling somebody about going to is raggedy ass Medellin. I'll be like, Bogota. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> But I definitely tell somebody Cartagena. There's no fucking get the fuck out of here. Oh, you Medellin dudes. Y'all debate. Medellin is only good for a living now. Medellin, I'll say that again. If you're gonna move to Colombia, a good city is Medellin. I'm not taking that away. But all that we in Medellin, bitches. No, no. That shit was sold yesterday. That's that that's like an old ass Ebony magazine collection. Ain't nobody reading that shit. That's like when Michael Jackson Thriller was on the front cover of the Ebony magazine. Ain't nobody reading that shit. That's like when Diane Carroll was on the cover of Ebony magazine. 
There ain't nobody reading that shit no more. That's what Medellin is. Ain't nobody fucking. Yeah, all you Medellin do say that shit in silence. Y'all need to be saying that shit in sign language. That's what the fuck y'all need to be doing in Medellin. Sign language of some shit. Nobody give a fuck about Medellin no more. And you got new dudes coming down, new rappers and shit. And and you know, I went to Medellin. You ain't where that. That old played out ass spot. Medellin is like when Michael Jackson first started doing the moonwalk when everybody in the hood stopped doing it. I remember when Michael Jackson did the moonwalk and white people lost their mind. I'm thinking like all everybody in the hood that was breakdancing, we looking like, ain't that that old Soul Train dance? That's that dance they used to do on Soul Train. The Shalimar dude came up with it. Don't nobody moonwalk no more. Michael Jackson started moonwalking like a year, year and a half after black kids was done moonwalking. When that motherfucking dance was played, hey, all you all you Midwest dudes, tell me I'm lying. Wasn't nobody doing moonwalk no more. That shit was played the fuck out. And Michael Jackson did that shit on 25th anniversary, and all of a sudden, white people lost their goddamn mind. Oh my God, look at Michael moonwalking. And all of us kids is like 12, 13, 14 looking like, he doing that old ass dance and these white people eating that shit up in old ass black people. Oh my God, Diana Ross got that old ass over there. Oh my God, look at Michael, he's moonwalking. He's gliding across the, that old played out ass. I never forgot about that. That, that one, I never forgot about. I like Michael Jackson and food these goddamn white people and old black people <laughs> into thinking that he'd invented some shit. Man, that shit was invented by the tall brother in Shalimar. That's who came up with the moonwalk. Just do your homework. Think I'm lying. Shit. Old ass dance. Just like old ass Medellin. He said, Germany, Germany is a Negro wonderland. Yep. He said, I'm telling you, I know. I know, bruh. I ain't even been to Germany. I used to run through some of the baddest first generation German women. I'm talking about accents thick than a motherfucker. I ain't talking about no third, fourth year generation. I'm talking about just got to the States. Tall as hell, fine as hell. I told y'all this one German chick, she gave me the pussy just because I picked her up. She was 6'1". When I picked that motherfucker up, carried her to that bed, them legs went... It was like it was like them damn legs were like a compass. One went way north, and one went way south. I was like, "Oh yeah, I love you, Germany." Them legs was like a compass, <laughs> pointing both directions, and I could spin them like a compass too. <laughs> oh man, Andre, Andre, slow down. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm trying to catch up with you fellas, man. I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. He said, Andre, I'm coming to Cali. Uh, he's, oh, I'm coming to Colombia. Uh, I like, he say, I like feet. Your foot man. I'm a foot man too. I'm glad Andre got pretty feet. I tell her that all the time. Uh, first thing I'm going to need for you to do, first thing you'll need for me to do is to come out them shoes. Oh, that's what I need her to do? Come out to shit. Yeah, girl, let me see them feet. You like Eddie Murphy and Rick and uh, Boomerang. Let me see them feet. Nothing wrong with making it rain in the club. Uh, you hating. Uh, got news for you. They'll do that shit here in Colombia. Anybody that's making... I'm going to tell you dudes. All you young dudes. If you making the rain in the club in Colombia, you a damn fool. Don't nobody do that. That's American stuff. Nate, it ain't that many countries you can go to where they talk about making it fucking rain in the club. You, she dance, she come down off stage, you negotiate that money in your pocket for that coochie. What the hell y'all doing coming down to try to make it rain in a club in Colombia? That's what I'm saying when y'all when y'all brothers, that's what I'm talking about them between the passport bro. Because a passport bro mindset automatically knows work with the network. I'm gonna say this again. The mindset of a passport bro you work with the network meaning you meet some dudes that's in that area of whatever country link up with them because they can tell you what to do and what not to do 
All you do is throwing money in the club in Colombia. What the fuck for? For who? Col- when? Okay. When the last time you saw a local Colombian man make it rain? When the last time you saw a Brazilian dude making it rain in Brazil? Come on. How many Thailand dudes making it rain in Thailand? We just talked about Germany. How many German dudes you see just got it raining like a motherfucker, got the gun and shooting it, the money in the air and everything in, in Germany? If I'm wrong, correct me. Say, Andre, you wrong because in Germany. Okay, correct me. That's some American Western ass bullshit that they tricked us into how to spend our money. Because we did, we, that's, that's our version of dick swinging contest. I can, I can make it rain more than the next man make it rain, the next man make it rain. When last time you saw motherfucking uh, bachelor party? That was some some foreign a foreign bachelor party, and they was making the rain on bitches. On the on the on, they'll make it rain on the groom. They'll make it rain on the bride. But just a regular stripper bitch. When the last time you saw that in a bachelor party in another country? Come on, y'all. Can, I'm I'm easily be to correct it. I'm easily to say you know what? My bad. I didn't know. I ain't got no problem with that. But thus far in Colombia, I don't see no motherfucking Colombian men with a pocket full of ones. I see our stupid asses getting off planes with pocket full of pesos. Talking about making the rain, stupid asses. But I don't never see Colombian dudes talking about, I'm about to go to the club, dog. I'm about to, what the, nigga, you, you ain't ready for me. <laughs> you ain't ready for me, dog. I'm about to, I'm about to make it rain in this, these pace. Well, I, we got paid this month. You don't never see Colombian dudes on the bullshit like that. That's our lame ass coming from America. Because they taught us to be lame. My man, them, all them Carolina boys at it again. Dark tails, them dark, dark, dark heels. Tar heels, my bad. Dark tar heel. When I come down to Colombia, uh, when I come down there, I'm going to Cali and Cartagena first. Good choices. Good choice, especially since Cartagena and Cali is like a 45 minute hour away flight. Bada bing, bada boom. Rain the clubs equal Pukas and Ray Ray. Yeah. I saw a dude on one time on another brother's YouTube channel. I'm a, I, I just had to be in a panel. And I was like, mm, yeah, I won't be on this on this channel too, too often. Cool brother, too. And this brother came. Yeah, I'm on my way to the strip club in Medellin. I, 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 you dumb motherfucker. I'm thinking like you dumb young motherfucker. I said, you don't have a network to network with. Part of part of the mindset of being a passport, bro, you have no problem with networking with the network. You understand that when you come down, you don't know everywhere to go. You don't always know every each person. You don't know the, the, the you know you don't know everything. Even if you've been down there a few times, no matter where I go, I always want to network. I want to get to know somebody who's got boots on the ground or at least had boots on the ground. I'm not gonna pretend like I know Sasua. If I ain't never been to Sasua, I'm not going to pretend like I know Thailand when I know his brothers that live over there, like Chocolate Man in Thailand, that I can link up with them brothers. So at the end of the day, I'm telling you, you got to have that network. But let's talk about the men first. Let's talk about the men, like like I just talked about. And shout out to all you guys. And if I didn't meet you, didn't get a chance to holler at you in the comment section, blame it on my head. Now nah, my heart. Yeah, Michael Jackson was refined on them. Shout out to Julian in the building. Sometimes I didn't know what y'all be laughing at because I be the says I I'll have said something. <laughs> you say you say Pookas and Ray Ray's ruin uh black men, the black they do, man. They fuck, they fuck they 
the reason why we got to have public service announcements, shout out to my man Steve Steve. We got to have public service announcements because Pookies and Ray Rays fuck up the passport bro movement. So we got to sit back. The reason why old heads sit back and say, I'm, I'm not a passport bro. I'm, I'm not one of them because Pookies and Ray Rays sit back and fucked up and tried to at least try to fuck up the passport bro movement with stupid shit. Look at me, mom. I'm a passport bro. No, the fuck you ain't. You a fucking idiot. You an embarrassment. You was embarrassment in the States, and all you did was get a fucking passport, and you embarrassment outside the country. Can't stand them goddamn Pookies and Ray Rays, man. I swear. They will fuck up, like my mom used to say, they will fuck up a soup sandwich. I swear. They will fuck up a soup sandwich. My man Top Gun is in the building. He said, good topic, Morphe, Brother Morpheus. He said, those convos too from the airport. Yeah, we always chop it up from the airport. Shout out to you, brother. It's my man right here. It's my man. Remember what I was telling y'all last week about uh, took a couple brothers to the to the dentist office and I'm thinking they're going to get their teeth clean. These niggas come out with the brand new smiles. <laughs> Top Gun was one of them, man. This dude come out looking good, like dang. I'm like, what? I said, I thought y'all just went in there to get get the teeth clean. He said, man, the deal was so good. It's such a good deal. I ain't mad at you because now you got three brothers in the, in the truck on the way back to the, to our side of town with, with beautiful black men smiles. I ain't mad, but we had we, we, it was a good day, man, to see those brothers get their teeth done. That was a good day. EMB is in the building. Buenas noches. Good evening, all. All right, let's get started because I want to pull some, some some things up to kind of confirm. I, and, and it's actually going to only be an hour. And I, I'm going to be on another half an hour anyway. So here we go. Let's get started. Let me do a screen share. And that's what I want to hit. I want to to share that one right there. And this is an article about the treatment of black men in Britain after World War II. And black men say they treated us like royalty like royalty these are brothers that are soldiers and they treated the brothers like royalty when they were over there overseas fighting and this article talks about during uh the second world war uh servicemen and women uh were posted in britain to support the allied troops so forth and so forth between 19 of uh, january 1942 uh, and december of 1945 and it talks about, uh, let's see, around 150,000 of U.S. troops came to Britain were black. I'll say that again. 150,000 of U.S. troops who came to Britain were brothers, your own people. So let me kind of like move me a little further out of the way so you guys can see this even a little more. There we go. But let me go back to the article. And it says, unlike white commanders who took a uh, full full suit responsibility offered uh, by the military from the commanders to combat troops uh, and cooks, black personnel were largely co-signed to service and uh, supply roles. So they didn't, they didn't have the brothers out there in this capacity shooting and killing. And it also says, as far as black uh, black people participated in every major American conflict, conflict since the birth of this nation, since Crispus Attucks died during the revolu- before the Revolutionary War, the brother, all the way until now, and, and brothers and sisters had to deal with Jim Crow all the way through, all the way dealing with jo- Nazi Germany, and still there were brothers and sisters after the war that stayed in Europe. It says before uh, the the American troops arrived in 1942, black population of Britain was around 8,000 to 10,000.
And then the brothers and sisters, I, w I wish I had time to, to play this video. It says they treated us like royally. I mean, like ro treated us royally. And that's one of the reasons why even the sisters, I guess that's her back in the day. Yep, that's her. 1945. The white Americans would shout at them all down the road when you went back to the States. And let's go to another article that I have that I pulled up. What compelled black men to move to Russia? And this article also talks about there was a time period that black men decided to move to Russia. Let me see if they have a little bit more information and details on it. 60 years earlier, say Negro workers, actors, and students and writers set sail to Moscow. I'm gonna say that again. 60 years earlier than 1992, in which this article came out, Negro workers, actors, students and writers not just military had set sail to moscow on the ss europe europa at the invitation of joseph stalin now we know joseph stalin was a monster so take that with a grain of salt and they were going to make a revolutionary movie that would depict the uh Man, let me see how I pronounce this one. Atrocities. Atrocities of racism in the United States. And the movie that came out, uh, I said Black Americans, intelligentsias, intelligence and artists uh, would arrive at the time of famine. During the great purge of the 1930s, millions of or, millions of ordinary citizens were imprisoned who deemed enemies of Stalin and were uh, executed. Now, that was, like I said, Stalin was a monster, even though he did invite brothers and sisters over to Russia to live. So he did his, his own people wrong, but he treated black people well. And then let's go to one more that I want to show you guys, which all of us kind of know, which is famous. The Jet Magazine article. Remember this one, guys, that's famous? Do Japanese women make good wives? This is when brothers were bringing their wives back to the States from Japan. That's what this article is about. And it says American girls shun Japanese brides. So when the women came back to the States with their, when the men brought their wives back to the States, American women acted a damn fool. So long before our era and our time, black men were getting women from other countries to marry and or black men were relocating to other countries. This is nothing new. So when I hear dudes, try to use their age and their stage of travel as we're behind the passport bro movement i'm older than the passport you're not older than a lot of you dudes that claim that y'all older than the passport bro movement you're not even older than that jet magazine article you're not even older than that older than that article that came out with brothers that brought their wives back from japan and then the brothers that brought wives back from vietnam and then the brothers that brought wives back during, or, or actually moved to russia or the brothers that were in that were in Britain in World War II. You're not even older than them dudes. So how the fuck you older than the passport bro movement? That I don't get. So when I say the men of the passport bro movement have been around the longest, for the longest, we have been. We have been around for the longest. We are, we're just a new wave. We just put a new title on it. But just like we had the wave of brothers going with dealing with Japan and getting Japanese wife, we had the wave of brothers that were living in Vietnam and other locations around it. 
We had the Waver Brothers from World War I, Waver Brothers from World War II, building new lives and opportunities. We're just the new wave. And I'm proud of being a part of history. I don't know about you guys. I know some guys just, I got a passport, I'm a passport bro, and I party. Me, I take it seriously because I'm part of the next black man migration. Black men have migrated around the world from Africa to Asia, from Asia throughout Europe, throughout Europe, all the way to Northern Europe, from Northern Europe, from the Canada's, all the way through North America, all the way through South America, Central America. Black men have always migrated. We've always, and also, we always, when we got there, we fucked the women of the men, of, of, of whatever that continent was in. If we in Asia, we fucking Asian women, and we getting their asses pregnant. If we in Europe, yes, you gonna get some of this black dick too. If we got our ass in North America, guess why you got all them black Indians in North America? Because we was fucking the dog shit out they sexy asses too. Whew. I done, boy, I done been with some Native American women. They are fucking... Shout out to my neighbors, Native American women. Woo! All the way down to Central America. All the way down to South America. Back to Africa. We always got our dick in some women in another country. Passport bros have always been fucking their ass off. We always been taking them from Hannibal and his elephants going to Italy and in and, and, and Sicily. And now you wonder why all them goddamn Italians got a somewhat of a tan about them. They don't look like regular Europeans because Hannibal and took his ass up in there with them damn elephants and acted a goddamn fool. And uh, no, 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 it wasn't Hannibal. The moles. That's who did it. The moles took their ass. Shout out to the more science brothers. The moles took their ass up there. It was fucking the dog shit out them Italian women. And the Italians got that tan. The Italians wasn't like that before then. They would look like the regular ass Romans and shit. Boy, the moles went up in there with that black dick and was slanging it. And if we don't know how to do nothing else, create civilizations and slang dick. Create civilizations and slang dick. Because we create the civilization and then we create the people in the civilization. If y'all think everybody in Europe is pale and white, you need to do your, I mean, Asia is pale and white. Y'all need to do y'all homework on Asia because there are a lot of locations in Asia that they got tans that's just as dark as we got. It will, it will fuck you up in Asia. And don't forget that the people from India are Asian too, and they ass has got the same damn tans. Them same damn tans. So being a part of this history of black men that have migrated throughout the history of time, man, I feel so honored. It's dudes that's still in the States. All they doing is playing motherfucking video games. And God chose me to be a traveler, to be a passport, bro. Man, shit, I'm out. The, I'm out. The, I'm not about to deny shit. You're going to see me in a history book some damn way on a photo. feeding some kids or some shit. You ain't gonna be seeing me sitting up there. It, hey, I can't tell you the last photo of Andre in the United States. Last photo I took was my driver's license in the United States. That was the last one I took. Ain't nobody got no footage of Andre in the United States. Ain't no footage sitting around like, yeah, we got some footage on that. No, you ain't got shit on me. If all the footage of Andre Spence is across the borders. That's what we call love to cross borders because we love crossing borders. Ain't no fucking way you're going to find footage of Andre in the States. Ain't none of it. Ain't no photo IDs. Ain't no, ain't no family photos. No, I didn't get none at Walmart or CVS or Walgreens. I, I ain't none of that shit. Ain't nothing, no new photo footage of me in damn near seven years they can't blame shit on andre but we got surveillance footage it ain't me they ain't got no surveillance footage they ain't got me walking past somebody's building they ain't got me walking past somebody's airport none of that shit in the states none of that i am a migratory creature just like the goddamn lion wildebeest goddamn african elephant i'm a 
See, some of you dudes are only silverback gorillas. You sit your ass there, and that's what you're supposed to do. Look like you big and bad in, you, in your own location. So the rest of us, we migratory creatures. We go from place to place. We Some of y'all make good, bald eagles. You don't go no damn where. You look good, but you don't go nowhere. I'm like the Canadian geese. I'm flying thousands of motherfucking miles. I'm like the goddamn whales. I'm like killer whales. I migrate like a motherfucker. That's me. If you want to get an animal, to, what's, what's Andre's spirit animal? Killer whales. That type of shit. Goddamn Canadian geese. Goddamn wildebeest. Goddamn zebras. Lions. Anybody that migrate, that's me. Goddamn sea turtles. That's me. Anything that's on the move. I'm not one of them sit around ass dudes and I'm not about to pretend like I ain't a passport bro. I know what the fuck I am. I know what the defini definition of it is. It's a mindset. It's the mindset to take advantage of global opportunities. I'm going to tell you something again. The definition of a passport bro is A, a man that wants more out of life than just in one country. You got African passport bros that said, I want more out of life than just what's in my country. And I'm not talking about people leaving their country and then they going underground and they going through jungles of, 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 uh, of, of Panama and they climbing up through, through Mexico and climbing wall, Trump walls. Them not passport bros. I'm talking about people that actually say, you know what? I travel for opportunities. I have education. I have goals. And I'm going to make something better out of my life because I take advantage of opportunities. That's the passport bro mindset. Black men that take advantage of opportunities. Now, you got a couple of white passport bros, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to put this public service announcement out there for real, for real. All you white boys, sit your ass back. We sit back and be watching y'all trying to incorporate shit behind our back, putting it out with passport bro t-shirts, mugs and cups and shit. Hey, white boys, y'all always think y'all can steal every fucking thing that everybody else do and create. This here... This is one of the moments we tell y'all ass, you ain't, we ain't in the States no more. You can't steal no shit. It's already a bunch of brothers that already patent Passport Bro Movement, Passport Bro Podcast, Passport Bro uh, uh, Monikers, Passport Bro Apps. All you motherfucking white boys that keep trying to come out and steal somebody else's shit, this time, you ain't stealing shit. So you might as well sit your white boy ass back and watch the goddamn show or either be part of it like you Eminem. Other than that, you ain't about to steal this like you stole hip hop, you stole the goddamn light bulb, you stole a goddamn air conditioning unit, you stole the goddamn ideas for the the the, the, the uh, street light, you just stole every goddamn thing else, the goddamn chips and the computers in which the African brother created the goddamn internet, the whole world wide web. You're always stealing some shit, white boy. We own you. We know what you do now. This go around, you gonna sit your happy ass back. You ain't about to incorporate shit because every time you try to incorporate something, you ain't going to get no sales because we're going to call you on your bullshit. This ain't the United States, bro. This is not the States. In the States, you can do that shit. But this is global now, nah, baby. You ain't got no motherfucking power, white boy. None. What's the most you can do? Take a passport? Nigga, I'm about to get my second citizenship. Who gonna fuck about you taking a passport? Really? Really? No. This white boys, this go round, this y'all turn to sit your ass down and act like y'all watching a goddamn mini series called The Passport Bro. The The Wonder Years. If y'all want to join in, cool. But all that trying to sneak in and take over it, we're passport bro. And try to come up with passport bro channels. And then y'all want to do passport bro reaction channels. White boy, do us all a favor. You look corny while you're doing it. Y'all like the well, goddamn corny ass rappers that can't rap like Eminem. Eminem and, and goddamn uh, uh, Beastie Boys. Them motherfuckers can rap. All you other corny ass white boys. Fuck no. Like you ain't you ain't like what's my the, the young white boy who died, uh uh uh, uh Meek Miller, Mitch Miller, something like that. Y'all know I forget about the rappers in the States. He could rap. All the rest of you other white boys, y'all need to sit your ass down, watch the show of hip hop. It's the same damn thing. Same damn thing with passport bros. We ain't about to put up with that bullshit this go round. Ain't gonna be no 10 years from now and the passport bro movement is all white boys. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, Mac Miller, thanks, brother.
Thank you guys. Yeah, y'all can sit y'all ass back for this one. This is this black and Latin. If you ain't black and Latin, just like old school hip hop, you ain't got shit to do with this. Sit your happy ass right on back, cause you wouldn't try to be a passport bro in World War One. You wasn't fucking with brothers then. You wasn't fucking with brothers in World War Two, was you? You wouldn't fuck with passport bro movement during the Vietnam War. What about when brothers were coming from Japan with all these wives and shit? Or when brothers were going to Russia? You weren't going to Russia with us then? Then don't be down with the brothers with passport bros now. Sit your little happy white ass down some damn way. Tired of white boys trying to do every goddamn thing we do and think they can do it better because y'all always trying to steal motherfucking shit under the name of, well, we, we, well, we patented it. Well, God damn it, we already patented it. It's already been patented. And some of you white boys about to get sued in fucking court right motherfucking now for trying to steal brother shit. This ain't 1929 where you can just steal all the goddamn patents. What the fuck wrong with y'all? Them days are done, over. Now brothers got passport bros and we outside of countries and we realize, wait a minute, whoa. whoa. You mean American white boys ain't got no authority over here in this particular country? Nope. Whoa, 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 whoa. You mean in this country that I don't have to pull up with that goddamn racist pull police officer pulling up on me on some bullshit? No. You mean I ain't got to tell my son in this country? Watch out because if a police officer pull you over as a black or Latin man, it could be some trouble. So here's what you do. I ain't got to do that shit because some racist ass cop. What? Man, if you white boys don't sit your ass down somewhere and watch this show, this one, y'all ain't got nothing to do with it. It's called Passport Bros. Passport Bruh. Y'all can join in if you want to. We cool with that. But all that trying to take over, there is A, there's nothing to take over. That's another thing about the Passport Bro movement. Don't sit back and be thinking like, oh, well, you know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, well, you know, the leader is. Y'all try to make Austin Holloman the goddamn leader. Y'all let women, brothers, y'all, y'all, now that you need your ass whooped for. All you brothers that walked around and tried to make a 23-year-old young man a goddamn leader of a, of, a, of a mindset, it's not even an organization, it's not a group, there is no bylaws, there is no, no uh, quorum, none of that shit. And you actually want to, you, you've almost fucked that young man's life up by trying to make him goddamn lord of the passport bro movement how the fuck you the lord of a mindset and i used to sit back and talk to austin and this young man used to be up, up, up under so much fucking pressure when he was going through brazil so much pressure not from the women from us trying to make him king and i'm looking like oh, i'm talking to austin austin just it's gonna it's gonna fly by bro it's gonna it's gonna be all right and the more I'm telling him it's gonna be all right, the more motherfuckers try to make Austin King. And Austin like, man, I don't want this bullshit. I didn't ask for that shit. I just, I want to be part of Passport, bro, because I'm sighted. I didn't think motherfuckers would try to anoint me as a goddamn lord of the Passport. Y'all need your ass. Stop doing that shit. There is no leader. That's what makes it so good. If one of us pass on, Passport bros can last forever because there is no head to cut off. Don't y'all get it? Because soon as Austin said, you know, I'm kind of stepped away from the passport, bro, movie because this shit is just too much fucking pressure. It's too much pressure. And I didn't blame him. If I'm 23 just to be a kid traveling and just enjoying life, I don't need your pressure from all you older motherfuckers trying to anoint me as a goddamn lord. I'm just a goddamn 23 year old young man just trying to find out what life is about. That's all the fuck I am. And y'all sit up there just trying to press that young man into being something he wasn't. Every other video. Now, because y'all pressed him and Passport Bro movie couldn't stay underground like it's supposed to have been with a goddamn cold high sign. Now, past, now Austin Holloman all on the goddamn news. He being interviewed. That's cool as an individual. But to sit back at one of the leaders of the Passport Bro, and Austin like, nobody voted me in nobody asked me anything he like dre what the fuck am i supposed to do i say ride it out brother it's gonna come to an end eventually 
And I'm so glad it came. And you see a whole new Austin Holloman now. Now he don't have that goddamn pressure on his back. Talk about leader of the passport, bro. Bullshit. There is no leader. You got dudes that support it. Support the mindset of a passport, bro. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. Men who want to take brothers. Let me put it like this. Brothers who want to take advantage of opportunity on a global scale. That's what passport bro movement has always been. Just like when Lee Attorney Ass lived in Mexico for six years. A brother, check. Move to another country, check. Learn a new language, check. Got all the pussy he wanted in that country, check. Came back a different person, check. If that ain't a damn passport bro, then what the fuck is it? You come back a new person with a new mindset. Why you say, I always say this. That's why it's going to be hard in a motherfucker for Lee to turn you to fall in love in the United States. It's going to be, boy, it's going to be hard. Lee, I'm talking to you. It's going to be hard in a motherfucker for you to find somebody to fall in love with in the States. You lived outside the country for six years. You got treated well. Like you said, if you lived a thousand lives in the United States, you will never get treated the way you got treated when you were in Mexico. They'll never treat you like that in the United States. And you think that eventually you're going to find love on a two-way street in the United States, Lee. You wasted your motherfucking time, my brother. All you dudes... Oh, I'm, I mean that for the bottom of my heart. I always say this. Passport bros are the worst motherfucking spouses for the United States there is. If you a passport bro, man, you are horrible when it comes to love in the United States. Why? Because you know that real love is waiting for you outside the United States. You know it. You can lie, prophesy, pretend, but real love is waiting for your ass, your black ass, outside the United States and you're going to take your ass back to the States after being a passport bro for 15 years and you're going to try to fall in love with somebody and that shit is not going to work because all the things that women did for you all over the countries that you visited and how they treated you and the respect you got and the level of femininity anytime you still got women and I'm saying this to a friend of mine today a female friend I say anytime women in the United States saying I got to learn to be feminine while well, we're learning to be feminine well, I'll be feminine for the man that 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 I don't I'm not feminine for everybody. My wife is feminine for every motherfucking body. Why? Because that's who she is. Every woman that I've met for the most part and all these do in fucking broke ass Cuba. Broke ass Cuba. Even those ladies are 100 percent feminine ain't nothing butchy about their ass they might not have all the mascara and all the looks but they got natural beauty anyway but they might not have the, the 80 dollar nails done and tattooed eyebrows they might not have all that shit in cuba but one thing that they have is them some feminine ass women and all the other countries that i go to for the most part outside the west uk those women are feminine. Whether they got money or they don't. There is no situation of femininity like the United States. Well, for the right man. That's like a man saying, well, I'll be masculine for the right woman. But right now, I'm, I'm kind of soft. Either you a man about your shit or you ain't a man. But you ain't going to change because you got a woman in your life. All of a sudden, you want to be a bold motherfucker. You a man. And when women in the women in the states are the only ones that try to sell y'all on that bullshit. So go ahead, passport bros. I did any of you motherfuckers. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Use your passport, travel for about a good five, ten years, and go here and try to find that same type of love in the United States. The only way it's gonna work, the only way it can work for you in the United States after using your passport, you got to tell yourself some hella lies. And I'm talking about lies you're gonna have to tell yourself for the rest of your life. You gonna have to lie to you and pretend like all the way, all the ways that women treated you in other countries didn't really happen. And that the American woman that you got, she just missed perfecto. 
That's the only motherfucking way that shit gonna work. That's the only way it would work for me. I got to go take my ass back to the States and pretend like I ain't see none of this shit that I saw in all these other countries and how feminine all these other women are and how supportive all these other women are. And I got to lie to myself and go back to the States and I got to lie for the rest of my life just to marry a woman in the United States. I got to lie to myself for L. I got to create my own plantation and put myself on mentally. That's the only way that shit gonna work. I'm putting it out there. I'm about to wrap this one up in about a good five minutes, guys. Let me, let me make sure I hit all the super chats. With the blue one in the building. Shout to you. Thank you for the $5 super chat, brethren. Pardon all my my linguistics tonight, my profanity, but I was kind of passionate this evening. I'm telling you, shout out to Drew in the building. I'm telling you, Drew, you travel and you take your happy ass back to the States. You got to tell yourself hella lies. And I mean, hella lies for the rest of your life. That the woman, the, all the women that treated you good and even on the sex part, let's just talk about the sex part, Drew. Even on the sex part, you got to pretend like American women's sex is better than the sex that that goddamn Brazilian gave you. Oh, my bad, those Brazilians gave you. You got to pretend like that sex that you had with the with the Venezuelan and Cartagena that wasn't really as good as you as it was. The chick that made you cry during sex in Singapore, well, that that wasn't what it what it that didn't really happen. The African coochie, all you do that finally got you some motherland ass. No, 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 she she didn't really let me bust in her asshole like she really did. That didn't really happen. You got to deny all the asshole busting that you was doing to all the women throughout all them continents that you was fucking in their ass. All the chicks that was licking your ass, sucking your toes, sucking your elbows, that was kissing your nose. You got to deny all that shit. All the ear licking, all the goddamn lingeries and all the females that was doing nasty shit with, in the heels, all the bitches that was rubbing your dick with they toe, all that. You got to pretend ain't none of that shit happened. All the threesomes and foursomes you had in Sasua, that shit didn't really happen. You got to be in denial like a motherfucker to actually take your ass back to the States, then fall in love and act like ain't none of this shit happened. Even if I gave my life 1,000% to the Lord, or to Allah or Buddha. I still ain't married nobody in the States. God ain't gonna tell me, Andre, by the way, you need to forget everything that happened in Brazil. Huh? What? I'm about to I'm about to be a Christian in Brazil. If I'm a Muslim, I'm about to be a Muslim in Africa. If I'm a Buddhist, I'm on my way to India or some parts of Southeast Asia, whatever country it was where I was getting my booty look good. I don't care, or, or female was cooking me a hot meal. I don't care, or the one that was, one was licking my balls and, and the other one was sucking my dick. Either way, I moved to that country that made me feel good, made me feel like a man. The one that had the business opportunities, the country that had the cost of living was just that, that was just right. The country that had I didn't have to deal with the racism on a level that I had to deal with it. I'd be a Muslim in a country that got a great cost of living. Why the fuck just be a Muslim in expensive ass United States? Man, if it was me, if I was let me have been Farrakhan right hand man. I've been a whisper in his ear, motherfucker. Hey, Farrakhan. You, you know we can do what Stokey Carmichael did. Yeah, when we get older, we can move the we can move the fuck out of here. Anytime you got Stokey Carmichael, the man that created Umgawa Black Power, he moved right back to the Caribbean, right back home to the Caribbean. He was like, "Okay, I'm done with fighting for for rights for Americans. I'm out this bitch," and moved right back to the Caribbean. And so many civil rights leaders, male and females, moved the fuck out the United States. Y'all wonder what all them old ass civil rights leaders would, would happen to them? Did they all get assassinated? No, nope. many of them moved the fuck out the state. Angela Davis said, big ass Afro Angela Davis, shit. Angela Davis was all down here in South America, Central America. She all in Cuba and shit. She everywhere but in New York, everywhere but Seattle, everywhere but LA. She like, up, oh, gotta go. Me and my big Afro, and she left the United States. I ain't mad at them civil rights leaders. 
I'm telling y'all, man, y'all don't. It, if you're trying to fall in love in the United States, I'm going to close with this. If you are trying to fall in love in the United States, I mean it's from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> don't become a passport, bro. I'm going to say this again. If your happy ass trying to fall in love in the United States, the worst thing that you could do to your mind is start traveling. A nice trip here, cool. Take your little happy ass on a couple cruises, yeah. Shoot on down to Mexico with your boys, sure. That's that's cool. That's some simple, just regular ass traveler shit. But trying to be a passport bro and fall in love in the States, you about to fuck up her life, your life, your future kid's life. You gonna be on child support. Every divorce attorney's gonna be making money because your ass gonna leave her. You going to start thinking about them goddamn Brazilians. You going to start thinking about them European girls that did you right. You going to remember that time you went to Iceland and you got some Icelander pussy? That time you went to, to Portugal and you got some Portuguese, you got some, the original Portuguese pussy? And you going to have to forget all that in order to fall in love in the state, man, please. That's like me coming to, uh, that's like that's like a dude marrying a woman in Colombia. Marrying a woman in Colombia, it don't work out. And he take his ass back to the States to try to fall in love. Nigga, that ain't gonna work, bro. Yep, Marcus Garvey went back to his island. W.E.B. W. Du Bois, yep. Everybody didn't hang around like Booker T. Washington. I'm telling you, man. Shout out to my man, Passport Mastery TV in the building. Make sure you guys subscribe to his channel. All right, guys. I'm up out of here. I know we got 81 building, people in the building. Like I said, I'm going to keep this one short today. It was just about the Passport Bro movement. Remember, first of all, the men. Passport bro movement is just that. Passport bros, bruh. Like 99% brothers. If you're a white brother and you're on board, come on, bruh. But all that trying to act like we're going to steal a moniker like you steal everything else throughout history, that shit is not happening. You ain't got no authority outside of the United States to be stealing shit. Your patent stealing days are over, okay? You can do that shit. You can keep on stealing from black people in the States. But we ain't in the States, bruh. All that white boy authority shit that you had, mm -mm, that shit is not going to work. Why are we traveling? Secondly, Pookie and Ray Ray, your ass don't count. Hey, sexy boo. Thank you, ma'am. I'm about to go jump in the shower. Pookie and Ray Ray, you don't count. You will never be a passport, bro, until you grow the fuck up. Thirdly, with the, when it comes to the passport, bro, mindset, we have no leader. We have no bylaws. There is no annual meetings. There are there are meetings as far as like we hang out together. Yeah, Andre just brought the truck in. <laughs> and so like we have meetings where we hang out, but as far as like having an annual with a gavel, passport bro meeting, no, there's no such thing. So you'll never stop the movement. That's the benefits of passport bro movement. It'll never be stopped because it won't go out of style. It's been around since the like I said, World War I, World War II. It is never going to stop. You will never stop having people traveling for a new life and a new opportunity. You can't kill that off. Now you got older people <laughs> that are passport people. People over the age of 60 years old getting their passports and leaving. They're like, I can't afford with my social security. I can't afford to live in this mother. I'm out of here. Here I come, Mexico. Shout out to Bobby in the building and my man Tiger Blood. Yeah, so definitely, guys, definitely. And the final thing I just want to say, remember, the Passport Bro movement is not just about the women. Women are the cherry, not the cake. They're the cherry on top, not the cake. Cost of living, a better cost of living, that's the cake a better opportunities as far as business and owning real estate that won't cost as much as it does in the States. 
that's the cake. Better health and better uh, uh, medical, that's the cake. Not drinking water full of fucking chlorine and damn fluoride, that's the cake. Living a less stressful life. That's the cake. That's why passport bros exist. Not for the fucking cherry, but for the whole cake. Women are just the cherry on top. Yes. Also, health, safety. I like what he said. Safety. The mo- what, what Andre and I were talking to today when they when they put out the news uh, uh, report. There's been over 400 mass shootings in the United States so far. 400. And it's just half the year. When the last time y'all came to Columbia and saw, heard a mass shooting? The most that you're going to see Colombia is going to do they gonna take your cell phone and maybe your watch or something, a couple credit cards. But they ain't just when the last time you just saw Colombians just popping each other just to pop each other at the gas station. And you wanna and when people sit back and say you going to Colombia, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous in this mother. You can't even go to Walmart. You can't even go to Target. You can't even go to church. You can't go to work. We got terms for it. Going postal. Because Americans go so crazy on our jobs that we got an t- actual turn for when we do stupid shit to other people who ain't done nothing to us. They fired me on my job. I'm about to shoot everybody up. Wait a minute. If you American, you ain't the first American to ever get fired from their job. If every American that ever got fired from their job go out and do something stupid, there will be no Americans. All of us have experienced getting a job and losing a job. If you have never lost a job, whether it be the company laid off or or you just got straight fired, you ain't American. All Americans damn near experience that shit. And you want to go take other people's lives because you experienced something that most of us Americans have already experienced anyway. The loss of a job. What did we do? We took our ass out there and got another one. So the brother is right when it comes to safety and also the experience of life. Everything that I've said tonight, if you have never used your passport, you will never understand anything that I'm saying. You would think the red, white, and blue is the only place in the world that you could ever live or die, that you could ever have kids. You, you actually think America is the only place where you can get a job. You actually keep thinking that America is the only place where you can get health care, that you get good food, that you will live a long life. If you've never used your passport, like most Americans, you will always think that America is the only place that you can enjoy your life. And us passport bros are here to tell you that's some bullshit. <laughs> that's some bullshit. <laughs> I don't know how to put it no other way. That's some more bullshit. You got a whole life waiting for you outside the United States. America only makes up 4% of the world's population. That fucking 400 million is only 4% of 8 billion people. I wish the fuck I would try to judge my life on 4% of the planet. Well, Andre, you could never do anything else. Why? 4% of the planet said that you can't do that. Well, let's see what the other 96% of the planet got to say about it. 4% of the planet say, well, I don't want to give you femininity. Okay, let's see what the other 96% of the women got to say. 4% 4% of women say, I ain't making no, no food for you. I don't cook a meal. Okay, cool. Let me see what the other 96% of the women say when it comes to cooking a meal for their family. I don't want to be married in a relationship. Okay, cool. Let's see what the other 96% of women say about getting married and having legacies. Only in America where women are and men are comfortable. I ain't, I ain't down with that marriage shit. I ain't getting married no more. I just, that's not how they talk in other countries. Everybody want fucking legacies. 
And don't nobody want to sit back and say, well, your granddaddy was fucking your grandmama and they never got married and that's the legacy. No, there ain't no fucking legacy. Legacy is when it's like a last name is going down through history. One last name. And in Spatins, of course, in Latin community, two last names going out through history. That's legacy. Not no fucking your mama had a last name. You got, but you you got your daddy last name. No, but then the next next child got the next generation got a mama last name. What the fuck? I'm just putting it out there. Shout out to all you guys that came in the live stream. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the love that you showed. I appreciate you guys more than you realize. I really do. I really do. Talk to you guys later. I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow night. And we're going to be watching the latest episode of of, uh, Dennis Sperling's reality show. Co-parenting with the Sperling's. Shout out to you guys. Have a good night. I'm up out of here. Peace to all you guys. See you guys tomorrow. Yep. All right. Tomorrow is flight. Is the flight? I ain't mad at you, brother.